Well, hello there, guys. Welcome back to my channel. In this episode, the first episode of a series I'm planning, we will be discussing the fabulous mists of, Av of Avalon. I'm holding the German edition because, well, yeah, I read it in German, but just as good even in German, even though the story takes place in England. So, in this episode we're going to be looking at the storyline so that you basically know what's happening in it for the final episode. Yeah, it takes too long to put it all into one episode, so I'm just going to put it all into three episodes. Beginning now. So the book itself was written in 1983 by Marion Simber Bradley, and it basically covers the Arthurian legends from the woman's perspective. The main character is Morgane Le Fay, who tells the story. She is a priestess of Avalon and Arthur's half-sister, usually portrayed as the bad guy. Well, she is usually portrayed as the bad guy. Now, Arthur and Morgane's mother, Igraine, is at first married to Gorlois, the Duke of Cornwall, and then later on she falls in love with Uther Pendragon. Gorlois is Morgane's father, Uther is Arthur's father, just to clarify. Now, uh, Gorlois is killed in a battle against Uther Pendragon, the first battle of many to come, along with countless others against the Saxons. So, Uther, Uther and Igraine fall in love, and, uh, yeah, after Gorlois' death, they move to Carlion, where Igraine get, has Arthur. In the book, it's all a bit more scandalous. Uh, well, yeah, I'm basically discussing the book, but leaving out some of the scandals, I'm just covering it in general. So, they move to Carlion, which is not Camelot. The story actually only takes place in Camelot from about the middle of the entire plotline. So, when Arthur is six, someone tries to kill him, and because... Carlion is no longer safe for him. Vivian, the High Priestess of Avalon, and Morgane and Arthur's aunt, Sister of Igraine, uh, she offers to take Morgane with her to Avalon and sends Arthur to a foster family where he is supposedly safe. After seven years, Morgane is then um, initiated as a Priestess of Avalon, and, Vid and Vivian prepares her to be the next Lady of the Lake, High Priestess, whatever you want to call it. For anyone who this is too fast for, for who this is too fast, rewatch the video. So a few months after this, Morgane is given to the future High King of Britain in a fertility ritual, which happens every time there's supposed to be a future High King, well, a new High King, and basically this is a symbolic wedding between the future High King and the land he's supposed to rule, just discussing it basically. So the next morning, Morgane wakes up to, didn't we all know it, her brother Arthur, who is obviously going to be the heir to the throne of his father. Morgane, why did you not see it coming? That is my question towards her. But she can't answer it, so... That's an enigma we will never get to solve. Unless I reread the book and do another video on it. <laughs> so... A little while after this, Morgane realises that she is pregnant. And of course blames Vivian for the entire thing, because Vivian knew she was going to be given to Arthur. Yeah. Um, Uther dies in a battle, and Arthur claims the throne, although there are a lot of doubts to his legitimacy. Yeah. So, even though, well, shortly before Morgane runs away from Avalon, you might call it, Vivian makes her 
create an enchanted sheath for Arthur's sword Excalibur, the sword in the stone, the most famous weapon in all the Arthurian legends, which is supposed to prevent Arthur from losing blood. And, uh, yeah, because Morgane feels betrayed, she doesn't trust Vivian to raise the child on Avalon. And goes to her Aunt Morgors, who is not a nice person and, a big, and appears at the beginning of the book. As a 13-year-old girl, remember this, a 13-year-old girl. Just remember that. It will be important in episode 3, which will be the final episode to the series. So, she goes to her Aunt Morgors' court, who is the Queen of Lothian, which is in the islands of Orkney, up in north of Scotland, and bears her son there. She names the kid Gideon. Gideon. The name. I'll spell it for you. G. W. Y. D. I. O. N. That's how Gideon is spelt according to that book. The confusion that rages within one's head when one first sees the name and wonders how the hell do I pronounce this? <laughs> Excuse me. So, yeah. Morgul's not being a nice person takes Gideon away from Morgan before she can breastfeed him so that there's no mother-son relationship. As we have well established, Morgul's is not a nice person. Yeah. And Morgul's raises Gideon as her own. Morgan does not see Gideon until years later. Till he's grown up and the druid priest. We do not need to go any deeper into why Morgors is so terribly mean. So, after giving birth to Gideon and all that, Morgane returns to Carlion as a lady-in-waiting to Arthur's wife Guinevere. Another confusing name for all of you. Did you know that Guinevere is actually spelt G W E N H W Y F A R. I was confused about how to pronounce the name. Yeah, I would have pronounced it Gwen Hui Far. Yeah, the confusion rages in the brain at that point. It rages in a lot of points throughout the story. Apart from the fact that there's so much scandal in the story, it is a very confusing story with a lot of sidelines, etc. I'm just covering the main storyline here. So, Guinevere thinks that God is punishing her. Did I forget to mention Guinevere is very Christian? So, she thinks God is punishing her and because of that, she cannot produce a son. Yeah. Where did good old biology go back then? The Greeks had it, but the Middle Ages, not a trace. So, here comes our, how do we call it? Love square. Yes, we've all heard of the love triangle, now comes the next level. The love square. A square. A wonderful 90 degree square. Yeah. Launcelot, Morgane's cousin, who Morgane is in love with, is in love with Guinevere, Arthur's wife. And Arthur loves Guinevere, but because he's had such a lovely night with Morgane at one point during the fertility rites, which came early in the film, in the book and film, they also open the film, which is why I'm, I just get confused between book and film a lot. 
And yeah. Arthur still has feelings for Morgane. Although he's married to Guinevere. And Guinevere is in love with Lancelot. And Lancelot is in love with Guinevere. Yeah. It's confusing. And Lancelot is Arthur's best friend, so betrayal to best friend or give in to love? Yeah, we can see where this entire thing gets confusing. Even more confusing than it already was, that is. And yeah, this entire love square causes a lot of suffering. A lot of suffering. One heck of a lot of suffering. And Morgane tries to help out later on. We'll get to that later. So Guinevere, being desperate to have a baby and produce an heir to the throne, asks Morgane to help her get pregnant and ends up sharing a bed at Beltane and Beltane with Arthur and Lancelot. Here is the great scandal of the entire book. Well, actually, there are multiple great scandals in the entire book. A lot of great scandals throughout the entire book. It would take a while to list them. So I won't do that. So after yet another battle, Arthur moves his entire court to the well-known Camelot, which apparently has better defences and that's why everyone moves there. So, Morgane, trying to help out in the entire love square situation and also trying to... Yeah, she's trying to help out in the entire love square situation and is actually not being selfish because in theory she, she could have had Lancelot for herself. However, being a nice person, she decides to trick Lancelot into marrying Lady Elaine, which he would not have done freely because he's still in love with Guinevere. Yeah, Lady Elaine is Guinevere's cousin, and almost look alike. And she succeeds in doing this. Yeah, by making Lancelot dishonour her. Well, by making Lancelot dishonour Lady Elaine, who was already in love with Lancelot. Yeah, as was pretty much everyone in the entire story. Anne Morgane succeeds in doing what she set out to do. So, sometime later, Guinevere, after having been told by Morgane that Arthur already has a son, tells Arthur that he has a son and Morgane is forced to, well, tell the truth and... Yeah, Arthur finds out he has a son born by his sister. The scandal doesn't end in this book. Yeah. So, Guinevere having a grudge on Morgane now because she helped out. Well, she did take away Lancelot from her, but... Guinevere, you're married. At first you didn't want to go anywhere near Lancelot because you were so faithful to your husband but now suddenly you want Lancelot and you decide to go as a double agent I'm just going to call it a double agent because two guys at your beck and call are you kidding me so moving on Guinevere tricks Morgane into marrying King Urians of Wales, who is the father of the man who Morgane actually wanted to marry, which is why it was so darn easy for Guinevere to trick Morgane into marrying the wrong one. And Acolon, the man Morgane actually wanted to marry, is a druid priest and warrior, and a hot one at that. Need I say more? So Morgane moves to Wales and da 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 dum the scandal continues, has an affair with Acolon. We see a tradition of scandals in this 
unfaithful marriages, if you ask me, but Morgaine actually does have a good excuse. So Urias does not expect that she's cheating on him, but his eldest son Avaloch, Urias has had a lot of wives before, well, his eldest son Avaloch, Akalon and Avaloch, yes I know, confusion again, it rages in the mind, and yeah, he suspects and tries to blackmail Morgaine, and she sends him hunting and is magically present in a boar's spirit when it kills him. A wild boar kills the hunter. The hunter is killed by the prey. Yeah. So, after this, Morgaine is determined to have Arthur the club go down for go get away from the throne and she wants Acalon to rule Britain because he is faithful to Avalon not the Christian religions and basically Avalon wants all the power similar to the Christians in the book yeah it's basically a fight between Avalon and the Christians throughout the book the rest is just a conflict created by this. Yeah. So, where was I? Yeah. So she sends Acalon with the enchanted sheath mentioned earlier in the book um, to fight Arthur to the death. She sends Acalon, her lover, to kill Arthur. And da 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 dum, Arthur wins, Acalon dies. Morgaine is down, but she knew Acalon would die. Are you kidding me, Morgaine? Morgaine. I do not have to say this often enough. Try not to leave too many bodies behind. So, um, yeah. Returning to Gideon. He is now fully grown and has learned warfare from the Saxons. Well, from the now peaceful Saxons. Yeah, there were a lot of battles against the Saxons. And they have renamed him Mordred, which means evil counsel. So he now goes to Camelot and introduces himself as Morgaine's son. There's a lot of stuff in between that, but then... After an intense duel between the two lookalikes, Lancelot and Mordred, Lancelot, who lost, is forced to make Mordred a knight of the round table. Mordred being Gideon, it's confusing. There are, there are quite a few name changes. So, Morgaine, who, because she made an attempt on Arthur's life, has been exiled from the court. Well, she has been in Avalon all this time and now returns in disguise with another priestess of Avalon and they wield great magic to make everyone see the goddess holding the Holy Grail and everyone takes a sip out of the Holy Grail. Holy Grail appearing in Monty Python and the Holy Grail, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, the Arturian legends. Yeah. And... After this, the Grail disappears. All Arthur's knights wander off to look for it. Great quest. And Mordred tries to take over Arthur's throne while all his knights are gone. And they battle. And Arthur is mortally wounded. Morgaine takes Arthur to Avalon shortly before he dies. And... Arthur dies just as Avalon is coming into sight. Touching. Yeah, very touching. The brother-sister bond is back together, but then the brother dies. It's sad and touching. And Morgaine buries him there. The Holy Grail is seen there for the last time. End of story! The end of the story. The en entire story in one video. Yeah. Thanks to Wikipedia.
and a lot of takes on this video. So, hope you're looking forward to the next episode which is going to be discussing the film. The film. And then episode 3, which will come a little bit after that, we will be discussing the flaws of the film in comparison to the great work of genius called The Book. So, hope you're looking forward to that. Please don't forget to comment under my videos and give me more ideas on what you think I could do on this channel. And click the like button, subscribe to the channel. Hope you'll have a great day. Bye.